Hello everyone. Uh welcome back. Uh yeah, we're gonna continue where I left off. And uh There, I cleaned it up. Go crawl through. Why don't you crawl through? Obviously I can't fit. Otherwise I would totally do it. Sure you would. Hold on a second. Okay, anyways. case was spinning out of control so fast I had to hold on my hat. Nothing made sense and it was getting more twisted by the minute. We've come across an old buddy of mine who has suddenly found himself out of purpose and place. The steel men where Rust worked for years got blown to bits. When the hard work people lost their jobs overnight. The police are writing it off as an accident. Coincidentally, there were a lot of accidents in this past week. The whole damn city was burning up and no one was doing anything about it. Did I pick the wrong time to get out of that dump? According to Rust and Miller, one man is responsible for all this mayhem. In one week, he's become a synonym for fear throughout the city, and police and thugs alike are shuddering at the mention of his name. They call him the Red Man. I have a strong feeling in my gut. It's all somehow connected with my retirement, the fires, and the official cover-up. What happened to Flint, the Red Man? It's all leading to her. I feel she is the key to all of this, the last piece of the puzzle I have to solve. Does she know more than she's led me to believe? Or have I let my suspicions get the better of me? It's hard for me to admit this. It's also downright stupid, but I've let myself trust her over the years we've worked together. And I have to trust her now. Sooner or later, we'll find ourselves back in that hellful city. This bond I have with her will be the only threat I'll have to hold on to when things go from bad to worse. In Paper City, all events are off, but the stakes were never as high as now. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Where's they here? I should tear them in case I need to make a rope to climb down the window. An empty box. Just think of the possibilities. A book titled Half Life 3. Oh, I bet it's fantasy. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Empty sheets of paper spread across the table surface. What future awaits those sheets of paper? Will they ever become a book? Hard shell on the outside, sweet on the inside. Metaphors never end with you guys, huh? It reminds me of a cocktail recipe. Add two, three ice cubes, pour some liquor over them, mix it in your stomach, repeat. I call it the Ted trademarked. <laughs> what is this? A car for ants? That's an old joke. The weakest link in this whole construction. Maybe I could exploit that. I don't like pillows. I'm far too rugged for such comfort. Well, this thing really stands out. Yeah, it does. Lowlifes. I guess they are so used to police interrogations. Standing in front of bright lights is where they feel most at home. <laughs> it's got drawers. I guess the logical thing to do here would be to search the drawers for clues. But I'm not going to do that. I have my reasons. The size of this box is only matched by its inability to comprehend reality. Look at that lamp, lamping around like there's no tomorrow. You go, lamp. I've got a sudden urge to play it on stage and destroy it over the drum kit. A wise man once said, the windows are the eyes of a house. Hmm. Let's go talk to them then. I had a feeling I'd find you two lurking around. How is it that whenever something fishy goes down, you two are peeking around the corner? Save your monologues for the shower, Snoop. We didn't do it. And what exactly didn't you do? Whatever you're implying we did or didn't do. So you did it? It depends. Depends on what? If we did whatever you're hinting that we did, or for that matter didn't do, and if the answer might incriminate us to a certain degree, then as a fact, 
I can state that we didn't do it, see? But if not doing it, whatever it is you're implying we did or didn't do would put us in the same position as in the previous statement, considering it was true, then we certainly did do it. <sighs> this is going nowhere. If you weren't a crook, you could have <laughs> had a career as a lawyer, although the two aren't mutually exclusive. Yeah? Well, if you weren't a snoop, you could have had a career as a drunk, although the two aren't mutually exclusive, see? Don't act smart with me, lowlife. I'll take you downtown faster than you can say I'm guilty. Now start spilling the beans, or this friendly get-together might turn out ugly for you, too. Where is Flint Ashworth? Beats me. He wasn't here when we arrived. Is he missing? No, I'm just asking because I have these two tickets for Wuthering Heights on ice. Oh, it's just wonderful. The reviews are overwhelmingly positive. Shut up, John John. He's just pulling your leg. So you're saying you had nothing to do with his disappearance? Who do you take us for, Snoop? We ain't no kidnappers. The kid probably went to see his friends or something, see? Besides, he's a tough kid. I'm sure he's fine. Sure, because kidnapping is way over the line for you two. It's one of the few things missing from your M.O. Maybe you thought you should step up the game. Who put you up to it? Whoa, whoa, as I said, we ain't no kidnappers, see? We may have our differences, you and I, but you know we would never go as far. Hmm. All right, you're off the hook, for now. Hmm. You two lowlifes heard anything about the Red Man? We might have heard something. <clears throat> My memory's a bit fuzzy these days, see? Hmm. Well, if you cooperate, maybe I can forget about that nasty carrot smuggling operation you two are running on the west side of town. Carrot smuggling? I don't know anything about no carrot smuggling, see? It's all for private use. My brother here is a big individual, and he needs his vitamins and such, see? Ain't that right, John John? Smuggling is such a strong word. That's right, John John. So, why are you here exactly? That's none of your business, Snoop. Listen here, you lowlife. I know you operate on the west side these days. I've seen you down with your face in the mud coming out from those 24-hour carrot bars near the harbor. I know you've seen things. You two better start being useful, or else. Oi, oi, Copernicus! How about you take a long walk down the short pier, see? We ain't seen nothing. We're just a couple of them hard-working individuals, see? We know our rights. We pay them taxes and such. What's a snoop like you even gonna do? You ain't a cop, see? You got that right, pal. I ain't a cop. That just means I can throw a couple of knuckle sandwiches your way before I take you two lowlifes in. Not that anyone would care. I can just say I found you that way, or that the Reef King got to you before I did. Maybe it's time you leave two exemplary citizens like us alone and find yourself someone else you can bother, see? I hear that crazy old coot's been chasing seagulls down at the harbor lately. Maybe he can help you, see? CBG. Haven't seen him in a while. You're saying he knows something. It's worth a shot, ain't it? It's not like you're getting anywhere with us. It's just that getting the information out of him might prove to be quite a task, see? Don't worry about that. Me and him go back a long way. He'll talk to me. Why'd you escape the city? Who says we escaped? Me and John John just came to enjoy ourselves out in the country, see? We might take up fishing, or hiking. Yeah, those types of things. That's just great news, Jimmy. I love it here. It's so relaxing. Sure, <laughs> and your escape had nothing to do with the recent activities regarding the Red Man. What Red Man? Also, Snoop, Native American is the proper nomenclature, I do believe. You know who I'm talking about, so stop playing dumb. Not you, big guy. I know you can't help it. Help what? What are we talking about? Forget it. I just don't get why you would protect someone that made you flee the city in the middle of the night. Hold on there, Snoop. We're not protecting anyone. It's just that this guy, he's not your average sap, see? Your memory's getting a bit better, eh? Hey, we want to see this all sorted out as much as anyone. With all the folks leaving the city, it's, well, it's bad for business. Sure, sure. I can only imagine. What do you know about it? Not much. And the things we heard are mostly just stories. He's setting fires and whatnot down in the city. Wants to see it all burn, see? No one will stop this guy, Snoop. Not even you. He's the reckoning this city was due for. He won't stop until everything is dust, and we lie forgotten in the sands of time. What? What the hell are you talking about, John John? Don't listen to him. He had a rough night. Hmm. Well, you two were useful as always. I have to go. When I come back, I hope for your sake, nothing will be missing. Besides the kid, you mean? You trying to be funny, or you got the sudden urge to confess? 
the first one. Yeah. See you later, Snoop. You better believe it. Mm. One more thing. You didn't find a key by any chance lying around the house. Oh, yeah, yeah, we did. It was just lying on the floor. That's what I thought. How about you hand it over to me? I'll keep it safe for you guys. Sure thing, there you go. Now don't go telling people we never helped you. It's like we're partners now, see? Sure. We'll have to find another way. Wait, I can't get the red cloth? We'll have to find another way. We'll have to find another way. So I can't get the red cloth, huh? Just some rope. I bet someone would find this extremely useful. Not me, though. Hmm. It's a, um, a small paper box. A book titled, A Small Car on Top of Me. The Life of a Book. I, um, what? What sort of literature is this? A weird one. An empty box. Just think of the possibilities. It's got drawers. I guess the logical thing to do here would be to search the drawers, but I'm not going to. Hmm. A level six sword. Hmm, it has higher damage than my gun. I'm more of a range guy myself. Maybe I can sell it in a shop. Okay, maybe I can take the sword. I'll just sell this sword, buy some revats for later. Just pants, neat. No. Well, this thing really stands out. Any leads on that's classified. Nothing useful, prob. I remember having a crush on Beverly Christie in high school. I would then she saw me one day and called the cops. Now I'm a registered stalker amongst. Mm. So I can't get this one. We'll have to find another way. No. Ah, that's how. I'll take it with me. Maybe Millie can tell me something more about it. Okay, cool. I was gonna say, <laughs> Swiss Army Knife, ah, uh, makes sense. Cool. Those two clowns are in there, not being useful as always. Did you ask them about Flint? I did. They didn't know anything. I think they're just hiding from someone. The Red Man? That's my best bet, but who knows with those two. So Flint's not in there? No. What should we do, Ted? We have to find him. Well, we're not going to find him standing here. We should check other rooms. Maybe he's hiding somewhere. Mugshots gave me this key to your parents' room that they mm, totally just found lying on the floor. We should start there, then. Such forward ideas. You're going to be a fine detective one day. Thanks, Bear. You too. Hmm. Okay. So, the red cloth, he didn't say anything about the red cloth? I mean... It's unlocked. Hope I don't get into trouble over this. Hmm. Big <laughs> snoring. I feel like these should grow in a pond. I could be wrong. Some weird plant is sticking out of it. A painting of some guy. Let's name him. Jeffrey. What do you think, Ted? I don't, but he does look like a Jeffrey. Jeffrey creepy face. His eyes would follow us around the room, if he had any. It 
if you draw with it on your mom's evening dress, she'll get, like, really, really mad. Like, volcanic eruption mad. Why would you do that? It's kind of stupid. This thing is so dusty. It's like a... It looks like... A heavy dusty curtain? A chandelier. It's French for fancy lamp. I doubt that. My parents' bed. It's so big and comfy. My bed is like sleeping on a pile of rocks. Well, not really. It's really soft and fluffy, but this one's better. It's my parents' closet, also known as a cliched hiding spot when playing hide and seek. It's plastic wrap for your clothes, for some reason. It's one of my dad's cameras. It probably fell down by accident. Okay. Yeah, but where are your parents? Why are you home by yourself? I'll take this film strip with me. Maybe I can develop it later. Where else to put them but underneath the bed where you sleep? Men, am I right? Uh, her parents left her alone? <laughs> Jeez. Seems a bad idea. It's a combination lock safe. Let's try to guess the combination, Ted. How hard can it be? Is it one, two, three, four, five? Maybe it's zero, 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 zero. Or, or 74? One, zero, zero. Are you kidding me with this? Okay, you're right. I give up. Isn't it 107? <laughs> there we go. It was the number from the statue. Not a police code for anything, Mr. I don't follow no rules. Hey, these are the liquids for developing pictures. I'll take them with me. Used for measuring, um, liquids? A book titled Developing for Dummies. I guess developers are dummies. This book is a good investment. Not really. If I had a sharp piece of bamboo and some sugar water, I could lure fireflies inside and use them as a makeshift lamp. Ingenious! You know your house has electricity. Just some canisters filled with some unidentified liquids. Going through trash is not on my to-do list. Maybe if my schedule opens up later in the day. Seems like it's empty. You can pour something in it, like water or fire. Why would you put fire in My it? mom uses the same one to wash Ted in. What? That's not true. I have a shower in my office. Oh, you do, do you? Big <laughs> bottles. Just a bunch of bottles. Two to be exact. Nothing interesting about them. Just a bunch of stuff used to develop photos. It's some enlarger thingy. My dad explained it to me, but I might have fallen asleep while standing up. That's how boring that was. Mm. It's an empty image filled with, um, some silver dust. You put it in the machine over there, and then some other stuff. Then you get photos of my school recital. Mm. It's where the water comes from, through the miracle of modern magic. Used to develop photos of you going to visit your boring old relatives that one summer when you had nothing else to do. Mm, okay. I guess. Oh. Nothing happened. There's something missing. I can't use that. Are you even trying? No. Come on. Mm. 
there. Is it over? Is that it? Looks the same to me. Some detective you are. Obviously something happened. We need to use the developing liquids now, and then we get the photo. Do what with it? Do what with it? I can't use that. I can't use that. Are you even trying? I'll take this tape with me. I can use it to tape Ted to a flagpole. Used to pinch things. It has measuring units on the side. Not that I would know anything about that. I'm 10 after all. Do what with it? Yeah. Okay. Well, I tried that. It didn't do anything. There. We just need the empty photo thingy to put it in. Yeah. Oh my god, Ted. That's him. That's the red man. He's in my house. Okay, calm down. That could be anyone. Oh, no, it's him. He's in my house and he did something to Flint. I have to find mom and dad. Wait, don't be so rash. There's probably an explanation for this. We found a piece of his robe earlier and now this photo. Don't get your parents involved, doll. They're having a hard time as it is. Oh, uh, this could be just a prank is all I'm saying. We should get back to Millie and see if she can tell us something about the fabric. Yeah, you're right. Okay. We have to wait, though. The room is locked by a mechanism connected to that machine over there, and it will unlock in a couple of minutes. My dad made it like this so no one would barge in and light up the room when he's developing photos. All right, so we wait. So, how have you been lately? <laughs> oh, I'm playing a sim now? What? Why am I playing as the red man? What is this? What the heck? This is weird. <laughs> Do this. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> Did I have no choice there? What the heck, man? Okay. <laughs> what was that about? I didn't want to do that. What the heck, man? Okay. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye for now.